Hey Dragonflies, Mr. Madsen here. If you're watching this video, it means that I couldn't make it to your class for today's lesson. I apologize for not being there in person, but I've made this video so that you don't miss out on the lesson. I hope to see you the next time I'm scheduled to be in your class. And also, at the end of this lesson, I have an activity for you to complete. It's a Flipgrid activity. Now, some of you might remember doing these last year. Okay, so you'll need a Chromebook and then you'll be able to complete it. I look forward to seeing your responses to the Flipgrid and I look forward to seeing the next time that I'm in your class. Take care. Hey, Dragonflies. It's time for a lesson with Mr. Madsen. Today we're going to start a new lesson. It's, they are called Second Step Lessons. And today, specifically, we're going to talk about our feelings. So let's get started. So, these pictures might look familiar. You've seen them if you've been at, at Duncan for a while. These are ones that I show just to demonstrate um, our basic feelings. And this first one, maybe you can take a guess. If you guessed happy, you're right. She is happy. She's smiling and she's looking straight up and out. She's happy. How about this next one? If you guess sad, you are correct. He's frowning and he's looking down. He's sad. How about this one? Yeah, if you guessed mad, you're correct. Look at his hands. He's made fists. Look at his face. It's a grumpy face. I don't know what's happened. He's either at a playground or at, at the recess playground at school or at a park or in his backyard. <clears throat> but something has happened that has caused him to be super mad. How about this one? If you remember, look at the window. Yeah, there's a storm coming and, and Andy is afraid of the rain and the lightning and the thunder. Wow, whatever she got in that little box has surprised her, wouldn't you say? She is totally surprised. This last one is kind of hard to see. If you look close, she's pulling something out of her shoe. So she went out to the recess playground and somebody had spit their gum out on the ground and she stepped on it and when she stepped on it, it stuck to her shoe. So now she's prying it out with her fingers and she's making a Mr. Yuck face. I call it that anyway, but she's disgusted. This is disgust. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just sick. So have you ever thought about our feelings being kind of like the weather? Like a sunny day, usually like today is a sunny day. Usually, we feel pretty happy when it's sunny. And a cloudy, rainy day makes us think about being sad. If there's lightning or thunder, that could be angry. Or big dark clouds could mean scared, just like in Andy in the previous picture. Worried. Now, this picture is of snow. So I would say adults might get worried when it's snowing because they might think, how am I going to get to work or how am I going to get to the store in my car if there's snow on the ground or ice. But kids, when they see snow like this, they're usually happy. Yeah, so maybe that picture doesn't line up for worried for kids, but for adults, it might. Now they have a picture of the wind blowing for embarrassed. And you know, embarrassed is one of those feelings that none of us likes to feel. It's when someone laughs at us or makes fun of us. It makes you feel really small and you just want to disappear. But that's embarrassed. You want to blow you want to be so small that you could blow away with the wind. Shocked. That's kind of like rain, lightning, thunder, big storm. You're just surprised and shocked. And the last one, confused. It's kind of like a tornado or a hurricane. 
You're spinning around and you don't know where you're going to land or what's going to happen next. Now I'm going to show you a video about our feelings. And they've got a good example of how our feelings match the weather. Take a look. Today we're going to learn about emotions, feelings, and moods. We're going to learn where they come from, what they look like, and what to do when you have them. Have any of you ever had a feeling? Mad. Sad. Happy. Wow. You guys already know a lot of feelings. Are there any others? Frustrated. Bored. Excited. Anxious. Tired. You can have different feelings throughout the day because they change, just like the weather changes. It can be sunny in the morning, windy in the afternoon, and rainy at night. Will I always notice that I'm feeling something? No, Jack, sometimes we don't even notice our feelings. Like it's a sunny day and you don't even notice the weather. So, this is what we already know. We all have feelings, all the time, even when we don't know we're having feelings. Feelings are part of us, just like the weather's part of the world. And they can change, just like the weather changes. Okay, big question. Is it okay to have feelings? Uh, maybe. Is it okay to be a sunny day? Yes. Well, of course it is. And if feelings for us are like the weather for the world, is it okay to have feelings? Yes. Is it okay to have strong or stormy feelings? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Is it okay to have strong weather, like a super stormy day? Yes. And if feelings for us are just like the weather for the world, is it okay to have strong feelings? Yes. Exactly. We all have strong feelings. Feelings are simply how we respond to things that happen to us. Does anyone actually know where we have feelings? Here? Here. Here? Here. Here. Here! Well, you're all a little correct. That's why feelings are so hard to figure out. They sort of happen in your head, but kind of everywhere else too. So, if feelings are everywhere, let's see what feelings look like. If feelings are everywhere, what do they look like? Yeah, what do they look like? I'm confused. Well, Vivian, you look confused. Your face is what feeling confused looks like. Oh, now you look happy to me. Oh, now you look mad. them on your faces. Other people can understand what you're feeling just by looking at your face. You mean like this? He's sad. He's happy. Like this? He's bored. You guys are reading faces, just like reading your ABCs. Okay, dragonflies. So we just saw that movie about feelings. And now I want to talk about our brains and how they connect to our feelings. So you remember this poster? Maybe your teacher has it in their background when they're teaching. But if you were at Duncan last year in your classroom, this poster would have been up. And there are three parts of our brain that we're going to focus on today, okay? The first part is our prefrontal cortex, and that is the learning part of our brain. It helps us to solve problems, it helps us to pay attention, and it helps us to make good choices. Again, it's the learning part of our brain. 
The next part I want to talk about is the amygdala. And the amygdala, think of a security guard, okay? And a security guard's job is to keep you safe. And that's what the amygdala does. It tries to perceive if there's a danger up ahead. And if it does, it might tell you to do one of these five responses. The first is fight, which means protect yourself. The second is flight, which means get out of there, just take off. The third is freeze, and that's a response where you you become like frozen, like a statue. Think of maybe if you've seen a deer on the side of the road, and if they look at headlights, they, there's a phrase they say, deer in the headlights, and they just freeze because they're so scared, okay? Fainting. Fainting is kind of like uh, sleeping, okay? But it happens instantly. So wherever you are, you would just fall down, which probably isn't the best thing because who knows what you would hit on your way down. And it's hard to wake up, okay? And the last one is flinch. So we have fight, flight, freeze, faint, and flinch. And flinch is more of an alert to danger. So let's say someone slams the door that's in this room that I'm in. I would go, what was that? So that would be flinching. So it's like alerting you to where danger might be. Again, the amygdala is our security guard and its job is to try to keep us safe. It doesn't necessarily help us make good decisions though in a moment because it perceives a lot of dangers as dangerous, but really they just are uncomfortable or we could solve them if we let our prefrontal cortex take over. The problem with the amygdala is it tries to take over and tell the prefrontal cortex what to do. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The last part of the brain that we're going to focus on is called the hippocampus. No, it's not an animal that lives in the jungle. The hippocampus is an important part of our brain. It helps us remember everything. It's the library. It saves everything. It saves our habits, our good memories, our bad memories as well. But it's where we store things like Kelso's wheel. Where Kelso's wheel, we have those nine choices to solve small problems, remember? And that's, that's how our prefrontal cortex can solve the problem, because it remembers in the hippocampus. If the amygdala tries to take over, that gets unplugged. The prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus get unplugged, and you go into survival mode. And that's not always the best. So we're going to talk about how to get out of that survival mode so that you can get back into being able to solve problems with your prefrontal cortex. <clears throat> so in order to solve problems with our prefrontal cortex, we have to have ways to calm down when our amygdala is activated. So some of these you might remember, you can, and they all involve breathing. Okay. And the first is belly breathing. You breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. When you breathe in through your nose, you fill up your belly and you can even put your hand on your belly to feel it rise. You want to hold for at least three seconds, but maybe five or 10 seconds if you're really used to holding your breath and then let it out slowly through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, hold and then out. And that's called belly breathing. Another one are balloon breaths. And this would be where you'd use your arms and stretch your body up when you fill up your lungs like a balloon being filled. And when you let the air out, the balloon gets smaller. And that's, a, that's another way to kind of also move your body and help your body be able to relax. Because when we get in survival mode with our amygdala, our muscles tense, and this would be a way to calm those muscles down. Another one are faucet breaths. And these are ones that we would do in class and you'd hold your hands out in front of you. It's hard for me to do um, in this way, but you'd hold your hands out and when you'd fill up your, your lungs with air, you'd close your fist like, and you'd hold. And then when you let the air out, it's like water coming out of a faucet. Those are faucet breaths. And also one of my favorites, hot cocoa. So remember, 
the cocoa's too hot to drink. So you smell the cocoa, hold your breath, and then gently blow out. We don't want to blow the marshmallow out of the cup, okay? But that's another way to help yourself calm down. The last one is a lot like balloon breaths. They're called volcano breaths. You put your hands in the middle of your chest, and when you breathe in, the lava goes up, and then when you breathe out, it goes out, and then you bring your hands back together. This is a nice one as well to get your body involved to calm those muscles down as well. So those are five ways, five ways to calm yourself down when your amygdala gets activated and your security guard wants to take over. Okay, I, I mentioned this before, but just a quick reminder. Remember, Kelso gave us nine ways to solve small problems. But if you have a big problem, we always go and find an adult we trust to solve those big problems, okay? Even adults, when they face big problems, they need other adults to come in and help them solve that problem. Big problems are big, they're scary, and they're dangerous and you need help to solve them. But small problems, they're just annoying and they bother us and they bug us. And so those are problems that we can solve on our own, okay, and using Kelso's choices. <clears throat> Quick little quiz, okay? And this is gonna be interesting because I don't have a way to know if you get them right. So we're just gonna go through them and we'll have fun with it. So the first one, is this a small problem or a big one? Someone is running into the street. Think about it, they're running out into the street. Yeah, if you guess big, you're right. Yeah, that's dangerous, that's not okay. It's never okay to run out into the street. So that would be a big problem. Someone's picking up rocks and sticks and bark chips and they're throwing them. Think about that, they're throwing rocks and sticks and bark chips. Now you might be thinking, well, that feels like a small problem because I could just dodge or run away, right? Yeah, but what if you didn't dodge it quick enough and it hit you in the head or the eye? Yeah, that's a big problem. If you, if you guess that, you're absolutely right. How about this one? This is a tough one. Somebody calls you a name, a hurtful name. That feels big feels really big. Someone calls you a name. It makes your security guard kind of get up and, and want to fight maybe if they call you a name. But is it scary? No. Is it dangerous for someone to call you a name? No. It's just annoying and hurtful. So Kelso would say, yep, you guessed it. That's a small problem. Now it's not okay for people to call you names. So do your best to ignore them, ask them to stop and walk away. But if it continues, find an adult you trust to get help with this problem, okay? Here's another one that happens at school a lot. You're standing in line, getting ready to go somewhere, let's say to PE, and someone takes cuts in front of you because they wanna stand by their best friend. Well, that feels like a big problem. They're cutting in front of you. And who cares where you stand in line, right? Well, exactly. It's not scary and it's not dangerous. It's just annoying. So Kelso would say that is a small problem. Yeah, if 